Vice President Gore appeared on Iowa Press last Sunday. Next, New York business developer Donald Trump. In his first speech since announcing his Reform Party Exploratory Committee, the possible presidential candidate spoke to the Cuban American National Foundation in Miami last Monday evening. First of all, on, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Cuban American National Foundation, on behalf of the Cuban exile community, but more importantly and also on behalf of those on our beloved island who cannot speak for themselves, I want to welcome Donald Trump to South Florida. And remembering that on many occasions the Cuban American National Foundation has had noted figures from the world's political stage. We've had here Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, George Bush, Boris Yeltsin, among others, all of whom shared our passionate aspiration for a free and democratic Cuba. And all of them came into our community to express their solidarity with our cause. Our very special guest today comes not only from the world of politics, but from the world of business. And that, especially today, brings a very special significance to tonight's gathering. You come to us today on a day where today begins the ninth Ibero-American Summit in Havana, Cuba, where we see what we feel is a spectacle to democracy and to the ideals on which this great nation were built upon. Because we see how democratically elected leaders of other countries going to Cuba for what should be a celebration of democracy, but instead Fidel Castro tries to make it something that legitimizes his regime. We see how our brothers and sisters on the homeland are jailed, are not allowed to voice their opinions, and today cannot speak for themselves on the island of Cuba. And today, Mr. Trump, you have here in this crowd the men and women of Cuba, the true victims of Castro's regime. As we continue to see those who propound and advocate a change for U.S.-Cuba policy, we see over the past year a relentless and well-financed campaign by the business lobby that is trying to place profit before human rights. And all they seek is a unilateral lifting of the U.S. embargo and to try to support the last dictatorship in the Americas, the Castro regime. Ten years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the dream of a free Cuba has yet to become a reality. But the world can rest assured that this community, that all Cubans, those in the island and those outside, we are going to continue our fight and we will continue to struggle until our homeland is free. We are a community that revere and honor freedom. And we understand that it would have been very easy for Donald Trump to join the corporate chorus of the voices doing Fidel Castro's bidding. The Castro lobby would rush to fet him very much like they have in recent days the Republican governor of Illinois. But Donald Trump rejected that siren song and has demonstrated that the only battle worth fighting is the one on behalf of the Cuban people for their rights and their future. He understands that the position of freedom first and trade later can be the only basis for a mutually beneficial relationship between the Cuban people and the American people. We have seen the attempts by this administration to go on the periphery of the embargo to under a supposed people-to-people -people program try in his last days to give, give Fidel Castro what he wants 
which is a lifting of the embargo. We denounce the Clinton administration for their approaches to Fidel Castro, and he must understand that we will not permit or allow that the embargo be lifted on the backs of the Cuban people. We aspire for a free and democratic Cuba, and we will always make a principal stand against Fidel Castro. And my friend, until we reach that day in the very near future, we will embrace and honor you as we are tonight, and that you consider this as a down payment for your willingness to stand up and express the courage of your convictions, that the Cuban American National Foundation thanks you for your solidarity with those who seek freedom in our homeland. And your actions will most certainly be vindicated and the true measure of the significance of your statements in Cuba will become known when our homeland is mercifully freed from its 40-year nightmare. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what Jorge is saying is that when Cuba's free, I get the first hotel? Is that true? <laughs> Sounds like a good deal to me. Well, this all began as just a little talk. I was going to come down from Palm Beach real quick and speak in front of 100 people. And this turned out to be thousands, and it turned out to be lines that are waiting outside to get into the room. But we really didn't want to delay you, and I also didn't want to delay myself, because it's time to go back. I will tell you this, that Jorge Mas has done an amazing job for you folks. He is fighting endlessly and tirelessly, and he just doesn't stop. So I want to congratulate Jorge. Congratulations. I've had a lot of offers, and sadly, it's all been very recently, to go into Cuba on deals, business deals, real estate and other deals. And I've rejected them on the basis that I will go when Cuba's free. As you know, and the people in this room know better than anyone, Putting money and investing money in Cuba right now doesn't go to the people of Cuba. It goes into the pockets of Fidel Castro. He's a murderer. He's a killer. He's a bad guy in every respect. And frankly, the embargo against Cuba must stand if for no other reason that if it does stand, he will come down. He will tumble down, and it'll finally happen. What a waste of energy and time and effort if this government opens up Cuba before Castro is gone. It's going to line his pockets. The country will become wealthy again, and it'll have the same regime it's had for so many years, and that's a regime headed by Fidel Castro. And it's inconceivable to me when I see the weak stance taken by our current administration, inconceivable that this can happen, especially with the spirit in this room, because the spirit of the Cuban people is beyond any spirit that I've seen by any people, and I've been watching it for a long time. <laughs> Things can change. I'm in a city called New York City, where I spend most of my time. And I'll tell you that in the early 90s, New York City was in terrible, terrible shape. People would say, what do you do? And I'd say, well, I'm a developer. 
in New York, and they'd say, gee, that's too bad. It had a terrible image, a terrible reputation. Crime was through the roof. Every problem you could have, it had. And now, just really a few years later, we have the, the greatest and the hottest city in the world. Everybody wants to be there. Everybody loves it. And the change has been unbelievable. In the early 90s, and I'll tell you this little story. I've said it a couple of times before, but not often. But in the early 90s, to show you how bad things were in New York, I was walking down the street with a young and very beautiful woman named Marla. Did anybody ever hear that name before? <laughs> And I was on Fifth Avenue and 57th Street, and I pointed to a man across the street right in front of the doorway to Tiffany. And I said, do you know who that man is? And she said, yes, isn't it a shame? He's a beggar. And I said, well, do you know that he's worth $900 million more than I am? And she looked at me somewhat naively, although perhaps she wasn't as naive as I thought. <laughs> and she said, what do you mean, Donald? He's not worth $900 million, is he? I said, no. Let's assume he's worth nothing, monetarily, of course. But I'm worth right now minus $900 million. And you know, she didn't run away. She didn't run down the street. Perhaps it would have been a good thing. And that's where we were in New York. That was the early 90s. The city was a disaster. My company was in trouble. I was in trouble. And today, my company is much bigger and stronger, wealthier, more pa any by any definition you want to go, than it was in the 1980s, which everybody thought was such a good time. The point is that things can turn around, and they can turn around very rapidly. I've gotten to know and become friends with a lot of people today, a lot of great people, a lot of people with tremendous spirit. I also, if I step back, watch and see our government policies, not only in Cuba, but on lots of other things. And it's not policy by common sense, because we don't have too much common sense in our government. And I see the spirit that we have with regard to Cuba, and then I see the politicians not only disregarding that spirit, because sometimes you have to do that, but just totally going the wrong way on a policy that would be so simple, and frankly, after many, many years, is ready to work. And that's the opening up of Cuba to investment by people such as myself and lots of others. But we must not reward Fidel Castro with trade, hard currency, or respect. Castro's jails are full of dissidents, as you know very well. His graveyards are full of patriots, and his government is full of thugs. And we can't allow him to get away with this program of coming to this country, hiring our best consultants, hiring our best lobbyists, and all of a sudden, senators and various other people that we've been knowing about and hearing about for years miraculously are on the side of Fidel Castro and fighting Jorge and fighting all of the people that, frankly, were at one point doing perfectly, and now the battle is almost getting tougher. And it should be a battle that would be won or almost won by now. So.
I believe the progress that's taken place due to people like Senator Bob Torricelli, who I guess most of you folks know, I believe that you will have victory. I believe you'll have victory sooner rather than later. Now I saw I saw Castro the other night on television and he's not looking good. <laughs> he's lasted a lot longer than a lot of you you people have really hoped. But he has lasted, but it's not looking good right now. And you will win. You are going to win. And I'm going to be down here, and I'm going to watch you win. I don't know what capacity I'll be. I'll either be the greatest developer in the country or the greatest president that you've had in a long time. I'm not sure. that if I could meet Castro right now, something I'd prefer not have, have to do, but if I could meet Castro right now, I'd have personally two words for him. Adios, amigo. <laughs> this trip has been very unusual. I'm very spoiled. I live in a large house up the road in Palm Beach, and I came down. Your police force has been phenomenal. I've never gone from point A to point B so quickly in my life. I didn't even know we were here. It was incredible. But they, want to, they have been amazing, and I want to just compliment them. Really professionals. But I've learned a tremendous amount. Jorge has taken me to more. I have met more Cubans than I knew existed. <laughs> And they are great people. And now I'm friends, and I'm going to be here whenever you need me. And I just want to end by saying, via Candidos, folks. We'll see you very soon. Thank you very much. Terrific people. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Donald Trump made his remarks last Monday evening in Miami. The New York businessman is considering a Reform Party presidential bid in 2000. 